Don wouldn't talk, and it was a total dead end. And then, a month after the shooting, we got lucky. Now, I was closing up the pawn shop that night, listening to a Johnny Mathis record. Now, it was a few minutes after 9 p.m. when I heard what sounded like a, a pop, pop, pop. And I thought, uh-oh, maybe there's some kids outside playing with firecrackers. And then I thought, wait, this isn't a time of year for firecrackers. So I thought maybe some popcorn got popped. But you know, none of my neighbors like popcorn. So then I thought, maybe it's part of this Johnny Mathis track. So I took the LP and looked at the liner notes and there was nothing about no pop sounds on that LP. So I figured, you know, I better see what's going on. Uh, I looked out the power shop window and in between the guitar and the, and the toaster, I could see that side spinner lying on the ground and then a car right next to him with a gun sticking out. Now, I remember making a mental note of that because I distinctly saw the back of that car, a gray Ford jabroni and a, a license plate that said, I hot puss. The pawn shop owner said he saw a gray Ford jabroni speed away after he heard the shots. Now, of course, he was mistaken because Don Lentil didn't drive a gray Ford jabroni. Don drove a beige Chevy Boca Raton. Fun fact. Robbie Wheatland actually did have a Ford Jabroni. But anyway, I Heart Puss was Robbie's plate, but it got us thinking, why not ask if Don's plates rang a bell? It's perfectly reasonable that one could confuse Don's license plate, exclamation point, jazz exclamation point, with Robbie's license plate, I Heart Puss. Eyewitness is your best witness, because the eyes don't lie. Memory knows what it saw, and if your memory's confused, then we can give it a little nudge. We said, look, why don't you take a minute and ask yourself, is it?